And good afternoon, folks. It is 12.30 on a Monday afternoon. We're getting started right on time with Talk Around Town. It's going to be an interesting show today. I cannot wait to get started. I want to introduce our guest today. We have two guests in the studio. We have uh, Leslie Good. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You are good, aren't you? Leslie I am good. good. And tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. I'm from Sparta, Tennessee originally, but I live in Salina, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, and I work in Tompkinsville, Kentucky at a newspaper office as an ad manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, you like that? Yeah, I really love it. Are you working today? I am working. They let my... you off to be on the radio, a newspaper yeah. office. Yeah, yeah they were. Off? They How were really that? understanding. So. <laughs> All right, and our second guest today is uh, Charlie Raymond. Hi, how are you? Great. How are you? I'm good. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, a high school teacher, an IT professional. Um, got a degree in psychology, and I hunt Bigfoots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a teacher that hunts Bigfoots. I told you it's going to be an interesting show. I really appreciate both of you uh, coming. You traveled from Louisville, actually. Uh, but are you in, in town for the uh, summer, in Summershade? Yes, we, we also have a home in Summershade. Okay, good. And you traveled over and you got to go back to Tompkinsville. Do you take the ferry back? Um, I will today because will? we're actually going to go to the site where I have seen Bigfoot. All right, and we're going to get to that, aren't we? That's yep. what we're, we're here to talk about. Our, our uh, topic today is Bigfoot and Bigfoot sightings. So Leslie um, has seen Bigfoot. Tell me when and where that happened. Um, this happened in Burksville, Kentucky. Uh, it happened two years ago, May 2014. You don't forget it. it I no. guess if you see Bigfoot, you don't forget when that is. Definitely huh? not. So May 2014 little bit more than two years ago. Where at? This was at a farm. Uh, it's in Burksville. Mm -hmm. It's right off Burksville Highway. Like what part of Burksville? What community? Um, towards Solana. It's so is that South 61? Is that what they call that? Yeah, I think, yeah, that's what it's called. South 61. And you were at your boyfriend's place? Yeah, his farm. farm. He owns a farm. All right. Um, and was he with you? He was. He and was. you just went outside. Tell me about that night. Well, we actually had went frog digging. We don't live on this property. There are renters that rent a home on the property. Um, we had been frog digging, and we made a few rounds around the pond. Uh, the gun got jammed. We went back to the truck and reloaded the gun. I have a question about frog gigging now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been. Have you been frog gigging? No. You haven't? Oh, no. So do you know what that is? I do know what it is, yes. Okay, so you have a gun when you go frog gigging? Well, I thought it was like a spear. Well, a lot of people like to use a gig, which okay. usually has like three prongs on it. Yeah. Um, but so you were shooting the frogs? Yes, with a twenty-two. With a twenty-two. Yes. All right. Did you shoot at Bigfoot? No. Um, no. Actually, we I had actually got to one side of the pond, uh -huh. um, and I heard, like, feet dragging behind me. Okay. And it was really loud. Was it, who all was out there? Just you and your Myself boyfriend? Myself and my boyfriend. And that's it? That's Nobody it. else? Nobody okay. else. Um, but I heard the feet dragging. We kept shining the light. Couldn't ever see anything. My boyfriend thought I was crazy hearing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to the other side of the pond, and we heard some flashing at first and we just thought it was a frog that we had shot at and didn't get it out of the water maybe mm -hmm. it had survived um, and then all at once you heard the noise like a two by four just hitting the pond and it Ooh. was three you're it, giving me coat chills already yeah it was bam 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 three slaps yes on the water this pond rippled like a lake mm -hmm. At that point, my boyfriend said, what was that? And he shined his light, which was much powerful, over straight across the pond where I'd heard the feet dragging. Mm -hmm. And this tall, black silhouette was just standing. Had to have been, we're estimating, nine to ten foot tall. Shaggy black hair. And I just remember its arms dangling from its side, just like what you would see. What people In the picture pictures, Bigfoot what you to picture be. him to yes. look like. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. Really tall. Really tall. Did you smell anything? No, I don't recall anything. Of course, they say big. There's yeah. an uh, an odor, right? And right. Like a not a good odor. Right. We don't recall a smell, of course. But he didn't see Bigfoot, and you did. No, he he saw him at this point. At okay. the point that I heard feet dragging, neither uh -huh. one of us seen I it. I got you. I got um, you. But he actually took off and left me standing there. Your boyfriend did? <laughs> he did. Are you still dating him today? Yes, I am still dating him. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know what's wrong. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a talk after yeah. this show. <laughs> but I caught up with him, and we actually, there's two fence. There's a, a fence line that you cross uh-huh. to get over, and then there's another fence line, some electric fence. We got to the electric fence and had turned back around to see if it was still there, and it had followed us with its eyes the whole way. And you could still see from that point the black silhouette, shaggy hair, and I mean, it was just, it's something you don't forget. Were you scared to death? I was scared to death. We actually, this was 11.45, give or take at night. Um, We actually were so scared that we called his dad, Mm because we don't live with his parents. We called his dad in Salina, woke him up, went over there and talked to him for a good 30 minutes and stayed there and just told him what happened, and we were just so scared. It was hard to sleep that night. Did you, um, so he didn't chase you? No, he never chased, never made a motion to us. He just smacked the water. Did you know immediately it was Bigfoot? Immediately. I mean, just first glance. No I mean, doubt in your no mind? No doubt. No doubt. Okay. It's yeah. an interesting story. Don't yeah. you think so? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. We're going to, uh, we're going to take a break. Okay. And we'll be right back. We're back with more Talk Around Town. Bigfoot is our, our topic today, and Leslie just told us her story about her Bigfoot sighting two years ago in May 2014. And I, I mean, I can even hear it in your voice, how true that is and how scared you were uh, that night. And you two just met for the first time today, right? Yes. Right. So tell me how, how you two came to know each other. Well, do you want to share the story? Okay. Um, what had happened was I had originally told my boss this Bigfoot story. Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, they all think I'm crazy at the news office. Because, I mean, if you see Bigfoot, you're going to tell everybody you know. Oh, right, the next right. Day, right. I mean, you yes. even woke people up in the middle yeah, of the night. Yeah, we woke up them. people in the middle of the night trying to figure out what was going on. And so um, my boss had shared a story that Charlie had shared on Facebook about another sighting in the area, which was actually... In Cumberland County? In Cumberland County. Okay. Um, so then you're thinking, well, somebody else has seen Bigfoot. Yes. And immediately, I jumped up off the couch, and I was like, oh my gosh, Sean, who is my boyfriend? <laughs> I was like, you've got to read is. this. He still is. <laughs> I was like, you've got to read this. We're not crazy. We did see what we saw. Uh-huh. You know, we're not crazy. Because were you starting to doubt it, maybe? No, I wasn't necessarily doubting it, but people do second guess you uh people say you know not everybody was believing your story right right and Mm -hmm. it it is hard to take that kind of criticism when you know what you saw right so because it's so real to you i mean you saw the arms dangling and yeah exactly everything the eyes Mm -hmm. and the eyes i mean they were like a white color Mm -hmm. of course the light was shining but um the story was shared through him about a doctor who had seen it um and so I would read it, and I reached out to him and told him what had happened to us. And then that's, we went from there on it. So you have a, uh, do you have a website on Bigfoot, Charlie? Uh, yes, my, my website's KentuckyBigfoot.com. And I've, in two decades, I've document, documented over 300 credible encounters in Kentucky. And whenever possible, I try to meet the witnesses on location you know, to establish credibility and to rule out misidentification. So after this interview, we are going to go to the exact spot where she can show me where the Bigfoot was standing. Mm -hmm. I can take a few pictures and a few measurements. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the biggest things people think that it's a misidentification of a bear. There's a couple things. Bears don't walk very far on two legs. That's one thing. The second thing is when this doctor saw the Bigfoot on Highway 61, he said the profile of it had a flat face, had a heavy brow. Well, bears have muzzles, large protruding mm-hmm. snouts. He said it did not. It had a flat face. So you rule out bear. That's the first thing. The second thing you, you rule out is the witness credible. Are they sincere? Do they take the time to get off work, meet you at a radio station? Like she did today. Exactly. Yes. You know? And you could tell. So you, I rule out the bogus reports. I only document the credible reports. Mm -hmm. But this doctor who saw three Bigfoots a month ago on Highway 61, he said to me, I observed what I did not believe to be in existence. He was in shock. This doctor also has a degree in zoology. 
So he knows animals. He knows the native wildlife. He said this was not a bear. These were not bear. He had saw three he deer. Saw three. Yeah, he saw first. He saw three deer. Right. It was about eleven o'clock at night, coming around a curve. Mm -hmm. It was just past the Kentucky Tennessee border, and he slowed down because he saw the three deer. Then he looked over to his left, and he saw these large iridescent green eyes, nine foot up from the guardrail. He saw the black, long, shaggy hair, and then he saw a second one in the ditch, walking parallel to the car. The second one, he got a glimpse of the profile of the head. It had a protruding brow, a sloped forehead to a pointed sagittal crest, which is indicative of a Bigfoot. And he just got a glimpse of it. Then he saw a third possible Bigfoot. And ever since this sighting, he's contacted me, I mean, at least once a week. Where is he from? He is from Tennessee. Originally, he lived in Kentucky. But he's, he's a medical professional. He's on the school board. So he wishes to remain anonymous, which I understand. Mm -hmm. And th the point of this interview today is I want more witnesses to come forward. Yes, you may re remain anonymous. Um, I want to meet you. I want to take your report. I'm going to document it if possible. So I encourage you to contact me through my website or I'll give my phone number at the end to call me if you've had a sighting. So you want to give your, yeah, you're going to give your phone number and can they contact you by email too on the website? Is there? Oh yeah, on, on the website, KentuckyBigfoot.com, uh -huh. there's an email and my phone number, I'll, I can give it now and I can give it later too. Yeah, do it, do um, it. And then if they don't have their pen now, they can get it before the show. Okay. Ends. What is your number? Uh, it's 502-851-2000. And you can remain anonymous. You don't have to give your name. I never disclose a witness's last name, address, phone number on the Internet. It's all confidential. Um, or on the radio. <laughs> exactly, on the radio. You've been very good. All right, is, is the doctor listening today? Does he know you're doing this interview? No, I don't think he knows. He's on vacation. Is he? A lot yes. of people are on vacation now, except for us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take another break, and we will be back with more about Bigfoot on WKYR. All right, um, we're back. We're talking about Bigfoot, and I have um, Leslie and Charlie in the studio with me. Leslie is an eyewitness to a Bigfoot sighting in May of 2014, and you told me the story that you were frog gigging on your boyfriend's property. Correct. At the um, on the pond. And you had a twenty two rifle in your hand. Did he have one? Were you both carrying guns? He had the gun, and I was the one picking up the frogs and putting them in bags. Okay, he had the gun. You both see Bigfoot. He takes off running and leaves you. Yes. <laughs> but you catch up with him because you're a faster runner. Yeah. And uh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he not shoot? Just take the gun and shoot him. Why did he not do that? I think we honestly were in panic mode. Mm -hmm. um, just run. That's the first thing you think. Just run. You don't think about it. I, honestly, you see it on TV. People would, on TV, you would pick up the gun and just shoot. Mm -hmm. But but that's not TV. It's no, real life. this is real life. This is something real that you're dealing with. You don't mm -hmm. think to just shoot. When did you think? Well, maybe we should have shot big, but Actually, we got in the vehicle and... Um, sat there we sat there for a good 10 minutes just talking about it and kind of looking through the glass down there and seeing what we could see mm -hmm. um we did talk about why didn't we just shoot at it um and then it wouldn't have mattered anyways uh he went to unload the gun and we were out of bullets no bullets no okay. bullets so that was the irony to it it's plus, it, plus it's a 22. right it's not going to do you would have made it angry it'll kill yeah. a frog but maybe not bigfoot no no we didn't want to make it mad no if all. you come across bigfoot seriously do you know you know you've studied bigfoot yes should we be scared of bigfoot or is he the, friendly there, or there there's not many attacks on people mm -hmm. they will bluff charge they will throw rocks, they'll growl, they'll let you know when it's time to leave, and most people do leave. So they just kind of want to scare you. Yes. I think that's exactly why the smacking on the water, we're not too sure 
if it was a limb maybe he was smacking it with or his fist it, it was yeah, something be. because we have taken we kayak and we have taken our kayak oars and smacked the water and mm -hmm. it still doesn't compare to the sound that we heard it did it ripple the pond like, it rippled like, like it a did. lake it, it didn't when we hit the lake or the river with our kayak paddle mm -hmm. it did nothing compared to what this creature did and I, I do have a hunch of what happened when their gun jammed and they went back to the truck. I kind of think the Bigfoot thought it was okay to approach the pond at that time because he thought they were leaving. And then all of a sudden, uh, unexpectedly, they come back to the pond. And he got angry because he wanted to drink or he wanted mm -hmm. to take a bath or who knows what he wanted to do. But he was then angry at you mm -hmm. and let you know it. And I agree with that. I mean, honestly, I agree with that 100%. I just still can't get past her boyfriend leaving there. I'm sorry. Ain't that awful? Uh, yeah. He's apologized a lot. I bet he feels so. He'll never live that down. He'll either. never live it down. Uh -huh. No. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> now, if you, you have not seen Bigfoot. No, person. no, which is a shame because I really want to. Because you are the one that he just, you know, studies Bigfoot and loves Bigfoot. Uh -oh. Bigfoot setting. <laughs> Bigfoot knows we're listening. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the we're off, right? Issued a flash flood warning for Southern Monroe County in South Central Kentucky oh, until 3:45 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Fix. All right, we're back. We have about five minutes left. We're talking to Leslie and Charlie, and our topic today is Bigfoot. So Charlie, uh, I forget what we were talking about before we got interrupted, but I think I was talking to you. Can you remember? <laughs> I, I think something about do they attack people? Are they friendly? Yeah. I mentioned yeah, those. I did, and you answered that question. Yes. That's right. I was asking you two years ago, did you have a cell phone? I did. Why did you not take a picture? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I mean... You know, people are going to, well, why didn't she take a picture? Why didn't they shoot? I'm right. just trying to think of questions no. that the public would be thinking. Well, and you're exactly right. People ask us that. And we actually had left our phones in the vehicle. Um, yeah. We were frog gigging, so yeah, that's not something... You're down there shooting the frogs. Right. You don't want to have them in a bag. It. Right. Do you cook them afterwards? Yes. Do you make frog legs? Yes. It tastes like chicken, don't it? Uh, yeah. Do Some frog legs, Charlie? I've never eaten frog oh legs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> never, never. No. Yeah, that's great. Stuff. Pretty good oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so you are just, you haven't seen Bigfoot, and you're the one that's so interested in Bigfoot. You've got the website going on. Yes. Uh, you've talked to lots of people that have witnessed Bigfoot, and you do interviews with that. And how long have you, has this been an interest of yours? Um, I've been tracking Bigfoot in Kentucky, like I said, for over two decades. I've got reports from law enforcement, park rangers, teachers, doctors, you name it. I've got credible reports. Mm -hmm. I live vicariously through these witnesses because one day I do want my face-to-face -face encounter. Because y'all just met today here at the radio station. That's correct. When you said you had an eyewitness coming, I thought, well, that's just somebody he knows, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's not. You know. guys met today. Yeah, people don't realize there's a... If you go to the internet and you go to my website and read these reports, mm -hmm. we go and we meet these people in person because we want to know, is this a valid report? And there's a lot of research online. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jane Goodall, world-renowned primatologist. If you Google her name and Bigfoot, you could hear her in a radio interview say, yes, there's Bigfoot and it, it exists in North America. So do the research. Get online, read some of these reports, read the, re you know, mm -hmm. don't just sit there and... Um, you know, with a closed mind, just open up your mind and explore. Okay. How come nobody has seen like Bigfoot bones? That's a great question. Um, in 2007, the first chimpanzee bones were discovered in 2007 because the ape, wow. the ape fossil records are very sparse. Likewise for Bigfoot, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of bones. So that's one reason They're, where they live is not very indicative of preserving fossils. I wonder how many live in Cumberland County. Uh, we do have some reports in Cumberland County. We have a lot of reports just um, nearby in Summershade. There's a history of Bigfoot reports in Summershade. Mm -hmm. uh, Edmonton County, Edmonton County, lots of reports. Like, just go to my uh, website. Brownsville? Yes, Brownsville. Big, big mole. Edmonton County. Yes. Edmonton County. Brownsville. Brownsville. 
They nicknamed it Big Mo. That's see, that's right off the uh, Mammoth Cave. Yes, Park, yes. National Park. There's been so many, so many reports. The locals nicknamed him Big Mo. Really? Yes. I'm just trying to think in my head right now of all the times I went running. I like to run mm -hmm. up and down this hill, the Alpine Hill. Oh wow! And I've I've ran at Mammoth Cave, and I'm just thinking there was Bigfoot out there watching me. I would hear things sometimes, and I'd be like yes. scared because lots of people would say you shouldn't go by yourself. And uh, so I'm gonna be thinking about Bigfoot. Thank you all for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're welcome. Well, we're almost out of time. We got one minute. I want you to give your website and I want okay. you to give your phone number because if there's yes. any Bigfoot sightings, you want to know about them. Yes. If if you've had a Bigfoot sighting or you know somebody who has had a Bigfoot sighting, please go to my website, which is KentuckyBigfoot.com, and follow report. Or you can call me. My number is five zero two eight five one. Nine two nine five. All right. Thank you for both for coming. Thank you for taking off work. Tell your boss thank you. I'll tell you. You should have brought us a newspaper. I know. I should have. <laughs> I didn't think of it. And thank you. You're welcome back anytime. If you talk to the doctor and he wants to come back, he would be welcome too. Okay. And he just saw big three Bigfoots like a month ago, right? Yes, on Highway 61. On Highway 61. All right. It's been interesting. Don't answer this question, but I have to ask it. Do you think Bigfoot would want or would not want uh, the wet dry vote for tomorrow. <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> Don't forget to vote, people. Thank you for tuning in to our show today about 